Dan Schwartz Jones, Assistant Chief Administrative Officer, and the designee of County Executive Isaiah Leggett to conduct this public hearing. With me this evening, on behalf of the City of Tacoma Park, is Suzanne R. Ludlow, Deputy City Manager. We are assembled here today to conduct a public hearing to consider the establishment of a residential traffic management area under Montgomery County Code Section 31-69 for a residential area for the Sligo Park Hills community, which is in both Montgomery County and either in or impacting the City of Tacoma Park. The proposal is to, to impose peak period turn restrictions to limit access through the community with the intent to move the non-local traffic through the neighborhoods back onto the arterial streets or major highways. Under Section 3169 of the Montgomery County Code, the County Executive is authorized to establish a residential traffic management plan which restricts traffic flow on specified streets. Before doing so, the Executive is to consider various factors set forth in the Code and is required to hold a public hearing. The various factors to be taken into consideration are, number one, the classification or function of each street in the area and existing street widths, number two, overall traffic volumes and level of use by non-local traffic, number three, the pertinent traffic and pedestrian safety factors, number four, the impact of possible traffic flow restrictions on nearby residential areas, businesses, public access and facilities, and the surrounding street network. Feasibility, number five, the feasibility of compliance and enforcement. Six, the need of the residents in the proposed area for traffic flow restrictions. Seven, approved or pending master or sector plans. And number eight, any other factor the executive finds relevant. The executive must not reject a proposed plan primarily because it would increase traffic volumes on arterial or major roads. The purpose of the hearing is to obtain public input to provide the county executive with a sound factual record, and the city manager for that matter, and with the full benefit of citizen and community recommendations as the county executive considers these factors in his decision-making process. I'd like to stress here that this is not a public informational he meeting, it is a public hearing. So I will be receiving the public comments and testimony we do have staff here, so if you wish to have questions answered, KB will be available at the end of this hearing to answer any questions that you may have. Um, at the conclusion of the hearing, I will submit a report and make recommendations to the county executive who will make the ultimate decision on the matter. Today's testimony will begin with a presentation of the proposed traffic plan from the Department of Transportation. Mr. Bulgarami, Bill Grammy, did I pronounce it correctly, KB? <laughs> Mr. Bill Grammy will make the presentation on behalf of the department. Following Mr. Bill Grammy's testimony, if a representative from the community petitioner, which I guess would be the Sligo's Hill, Sligo Hills, is there someone here from Sligo Hills yes. who is representative? Okay. If uh, wishes to speak, I will have the petitioner present testimony next. Next, any public officials who wish to address this matter are invited to speak. Any public officials who are going to want to speak? Okay. Thereafter, pardon me, did I miss one? There's one here. Okay. Terry Siemens is one of our council members. Okay. Mr. I'm sorry, where's the councilman? Okay, Councilman Siemens. Okay. Um, so uh, next, any public officials who wish to address the matter are invited to speak. Thereafter, I will take speakers in the order their names appear. Uh, we have a very large crowd here this evening. So I'm, what I would like to do is I would like to ask individuals to limit their comments to two minutes, and I would like to ask association speakers to limit their comments to four minutes. Everyone will have the opportunity to submit written comments if you feel that you have more to say and you couldn't uh, address it in an adequate period of time. Please feel free to submit written comments. The record uh, will be held open for a period of 14 days until March 10th, 2010 for the receipt of written comments. Anyone wishing to submit written comments must send their comments to, and um, I'll say this now, if you can write it down fine, if you want it again, I, I'll say it again at the end of this hearing, 
Um, and if you can't get it all, we can write it down. You can come look at uh, the card and get the information. But the written comments should go to Khurshid, K-H-U-R-S-H-E-E-D, Bill Grammy, B-I-L-G-R-A-M-I, at 100 Edison Drive, E-D-I-S-O-N, oh, I'm sorry, Edison Park Drive, fourth floor, Gaithersburg, Maryland, Two, is that 20878? 20878. Uh, they may also be emailed. You can email your comments, which may be easier for many of you, to Kershed. Again, that's K H U R S H E E D dot, the period, Bill Grammy, B I L G R A M I, at Montgomery County, all one word, Montgomery County MD dot gov. <coughs> All comments must be received by 5 p.m. on March 10, 2010. What will then happen is that uh, Mr. Bulgrami will compile the record, the official record, with a copy of the transcript from this evening, and he will transmit a copy of that record both to me and to uh, Ms. Ludlow, and so that we will both have a copy of the record. It was based on that record. Uh, that I will write my report and recommendation for the county executive. By law, I must have my report and recommendation to the executive within, I think it's 30 days following uh, the close of the record. So with that, um, I, KB, would you please, did you want to add anything before? No, welcome. I'm Suzanne Ludlow from the city of Tacoma Park. Um, we're very much waiting for our new auditorium to open, so we have a little more space. Uh, thank you for your patience this evening. Okay, so we'll begin. Okay, and I see that, that there's a dais uh, right in the middle. Is that where um, individuals are expected to speak from? Yes. Okay, so that's where you will go to speak when you're called up to speak. Uh, we'll begin with Mr. Bill Grammy to describe the proposed plan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Khurshid Bill Grammy, and I'm a traffic engineer with Department of Transportation, Division of Traffic Engineering and Operations, Montgomery County. Today we are here to consider the installation of through traffic volume access restrictions during peak hours of traffic on Park Valley Road, Hilltop Road in Sligo Park Hills, and on Ritchie Avenue and Geneva Avenue in the city of Tacoma Park. Executive Regulation 1794 sets guidelines and criteria for evaluating neighborhoods, neighborhood requests for installation of traffic access restrictions on residential streets. An application and letters to the county were submitted by Mr. Michael Bergeron and Mr. Samuel Stokes, co-chairman of the Sligo Park Hills Citizens Association, expressing concerns regarding non-local through traffic on Park Valley Road and on Hilltop Road. A traffic study was conducted to determine if there is justification to limit access on these streets during the evening and morning peak travel periods. Results from this traffic study indicated that all the requ requisite criteria were met, including street classification, traffic volumes, and percent of non-local vehicles. The next step in the process was the creation of a traffic management plan that addresses both the concerns of the neighborhood and the prevailing traffic conditions. In evaluating this plan, the department considered the impacts of the proposed plan on surrounding residential communities, the arterial and major road network, public facilities, and other community destinations. As a result, Ritchie Citizens Association expressed their concerns that if access restrictions are implemented on Park Valley Road and on Hilltop Road, then motorists will use the other alternate available routes, that is, Ritchie Avenue and Geneva Avenue. Hence, a separate study was conducted following the county's 1794 regulations. As a result, proposed access restriction plans were developed for the streets within the city of Tacoma Park pending approval from the city. The proposed traffic management plan is designed to limit the access of commuter and non-local cut-through traffic through the Sligo Park Hills neighborhood and the city of Tacoma Park streets without severely impacting the accessibility for local residents who live within the community. In this regard, the plan proposes the following restrictions. 
what I will do is I will read out the restrictions and Murad will point out on, on a GIS plan in front. First for Sligo Park Hills neighborhood, a do not enter sign 6.30 to 9.30 a.m. Monday through Friday for Hilltop Road westbound direction on Eastern Leg at Hilltop Road and Geneva Avenue intersection. Second, uh, do not enter 4 to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday sign for Hilltop Road eastbound direction on Eastern Leg at Hilltop Road and Mississippi Avenue intersection. No left turn, 6.30 to 9.30 a.m., Monday through Friday, sign for Sligo Creek Parkway, northbound direction on southern leg at Sligo Creek Parkway and Park Valley Road intersection. No right turn, 6.30 to 9.30 a.m., sign for Sligo Creek Parkway, southbound direction, placed on northern leg at Sligo Creek Parkway and Park Valley Road intersection. Do not enter sign, 6.30 to 9.30 a.m., Monday through Friday, for westbound Park Valley Road on West Leg at Sligo Creek Parkway and Park Valley Road intersection. Do not enter 4 to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday sign for southbound Sligo Creek Parkway on Southern Leg at Sligo Creek Parkway and Park Valley Road intersection. Now these are the restrictions for Sligo Park Hills. Let's uh, go flip the chart please. For City of Tacoma Park. No right turn 6.30 to 9.30 a.m. Monday through Friday sign for Maple Avenue, westbound direction on East Leg at Maple Avenue and Ritchie Avenue intersection. No left turn, 4 to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday sign for Ritchie Avenue, southbound direction on Northern Leg at Maple Avenue and Ritchie Avenue intersection. No right turn, 4 to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday sign for Geneva Avenue, eastbound direction on Western Leg at Geneva and Hilltop Road intersection. The proposed plan for Sligo Park Hills has been approved by Section Chief of Traffic Engineering Studies Section of the County. This public hearing is being held to present the proposed plan and receive public testimony. The hearing record will be held open for 14 days, after which the County Executive must issue a statement of decision. If the plan gets approval from the County Executive, before the County install the regulatory signs, the applicants must collect a petition for implementation of the controls from residents along the affected and surrounding streets. A simple majority is required, one adult signature per dwelling unit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, the next one, the order that I indicated we would go in is Sligo Park Hills was the petitioner for the um, restrictions, and we have someone here to speak on behalf of the petitioner. Um, if you could please state your name when you get up there, state your name and your affiliation, and uh, you'll have four minutes. Good evening. My name is Sam Stokes, and I am the co-chair of the Sligo Park Hills Neighborhood Association Traffic Committee. Our streets, particularly Hilltop and Park Valley, are over... I'm sorry? Okay. Our streets, particularly Hilltop and Park Valley, are overwhelmed by drivers cutting through during rush hour. Our streets are barely wide enough for two cars to pass and have no sidewalks. They were not designed for the volume of traffic they are currently carrying. Pedestrians, particularly children working, walking to and from schools and bus stops, are in constant danger. Parked cars further restrict traffic and options for pedestrians. Since the early 1990s, our association has worked to slow traffic down. At our request, the county installed four-way stop signs at several intersections and speed humps were added to four of our streets. While these measures have slowed traffic somewhat, the volume has steadily increased. In 2003, we asked the county to consider our streets for access restrictions. The county responded by doing traffic counts on Hilltop and Park Valley roads. We got the results in the fall of 2005. The counts showed that these two streets had major problems. The peak volume during the morning rush hour was 280 cars on Park Valley, far exceeding the 100 cars per hour criterion for access restriction eligibility established by the county for streets like ours. In 2006, our association 
surveyed every household in the neighborhood for recommendations. The great majority of households responding res favored entry restrictions. Based on this information, our association recommended restrictions along the lines of what is being proposed this evening. In May of that year, we met with engineers from the county and the city to review the options and were told that what we were proposing was reasonable. We informed our community members about what we were proposing and got their support. We also briefed the neighboring Ritchie Citizens Association about our plans and sought their comments. Based on our recommendations, the county's engineers issued its first draft, uh, the first draft of their plan in February 2008. That summer, we learned that the Ritchie Citizens Association was concerned that our plan might increase traffic on their streets. Several joint meetings between our association and theirs ensued, which resulted in the county's study being expanded to include their streets as well, and the final plan, uh, which is before you this evening. We are most appreciative of the concern for safety on our streets expressed by the leaders of the Ritchie Citizens Association, and we are pleased that working with their leaders and the city and county officials, we have come up with a plan that should not result in increase in traffic on any of the residential streets in our two neighborhoods. While the restrictions will result in inconvenience for some of our neighborhood's residents, our neighbors are nearly unanimous in their belief that these in inconveniences are well worth it for the sake of safety. The plan will result in slightly longer commutes for some drivers who have been in the habit of cutting through our neighborhood. However, the city's engineers have timed the alternate routes that would need that they would need to take and have determined that the average additional time will be no more than 60 seconds, a very small price to pay for added safety on our streets. Seven years ago, the Sligo Park Hills Neighborhood Association asked the county to address our traffic problems. We think it is now time that the reasonable plan before you this evening be adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Stokes, Mr. Stokes, just one quick question. You indicated that you surveyed every household for recommendations. How many households are, um, does your association represent? Uh, 296. 296, our co-president tells us. Um, now I have and we a... heard from over half of them. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, thank you. The, the, uh, I know I had indicated... Uh, Council Member Siemens, do you mind if I ask uh, the Ritchie Citizens Association as a sort of a co-petitioner first? No problem. Okay, thank you. So um, because of the way that it seems that there was a dual petition or a second petition that grew out of the first petition, I'd like to uh, treat the Ritchie um, Citizens Association as a co-petitioner and give you the opportunity to speak as well. Thank so please much. identify yourself. My name is Richard Payne, and I live at 39 Oswego Avenue, and uh, I'm the president of the Ritchie Citizens Association. Our members live on Ritchie, Geneva, Oswego Avenues, and in the Franklin Apartments on the corner of Ritchie and Maple. Um, the trucks that pick up the city's garbage, uh, recycling, and plow its streets during storms. Let's hear it for public <laughs> works. Yay. Rumble through our streets in the early morning on their way to and from public works. School buses take a shortcut from the middle school to Piney Branch Road, and police cars come by to refuel. It's busy, but it's a residential street. In contrast to Tacoma Park's arterial ro roads, none of the streets in our community have sidewalks on both sides of the road. Geneva Avenue, with its church and daycare center, has no sidewalk on either side of the road. There are no pedestrian crossings marked for our elderly or crossing guides for our children. The present study concluded that the current traffic density on Ritchie Avenue already exceeds county limits for a residential street. We believe that if traffic restrictions for the Sligo Hills community are enacted without the additional proposed restrictions on Ritchie and Geneva, traffic along Geneva and Ritchie Avenues could increase by as much as 200% at rush hour. By contrast, even if all of the traffic currently on Ritchie during rush hour moved on to Philadelphia Avenue rather than Sligo Creek Parkway, it would own with its side uh, on then Philadelphia Avenue with its sidewalks, pedestrian crossings and crossing guards would experience only an 18% increase in traffic volume at the most. 
So based on discussions with the RCA county engineers, considered two alternate traffic restrictions for Ritchie and Geneva Avenue. One utilizing no turn signs, which is the one that the county engineers favored and presented here, and a second that uh, utilized no entry signs, and this they described as the more restrictive option. Ritchie Citizens Association mounted a ballot in our neighborhood, and uh, we have about 80 households, uh, 43 households re responded, and a clear majority, 63% of those, were in favor of one of, of the two traffic access restriction methods proposed in the county study. You said all of them responded? 43%, For, uh, 43 out responded, of 80. Responded favorably. Of the, no, of the people who, of the, people who res, of the households that responded, 63% were in favor of one of the two okay. traffic restrictions. So okay, it's a clear, a clear majority. A plurality favored the more restrictive op option involving the posting of no entry signs during rush hours rather than no turn signs, uh, which was favored by the city engineers. And other members of RCA will, uh, will argue at this meeting that the city council should adopt the more restrictive no entry option, believing it to be the safer alternative given the current traffic density on Ritchie Avenue already exceeds county limits for a residential street. RCA therefore joins with its neighbors in Sligo Park Hills to ask the city of Tacoma Park and the Montgomery County Council to move forward together so as to implement both sets of traffic restrictions and keep this cut through traffic on arterial roads. Um, I'll submit a letter to uh, BJ concerning the, uh, the ballot that we hold. Thank you very much. Jeff. Thank you. Um, Council Member Siemens. Thank you. I'm Terry Siemens on the City Council in Tacoma Park and also a resident of Ritchie Avenue. I uh, just wanted to take a pause to thank KB and Marat, the engineers from the county, who were so helpful in coming down and, and putting this plan together. I especially want to thank them for the, uh, going, the extra effort to come down and talk with the community members over and over again about the issues and, and try to work through the, uh, the questions that they had. I also want to thank Mayor Williams and uh, my city council colleagues, uh, Dan Robinson and Ruben Snipper, who are here with us tonight. Um, I know that uh, we're all here to listen to the community and uh, uh, make a informed decision uh, as we move forward with this. I also want to thank uh, the county for uh, holding this joint hearing. This is a, a complex uh, plan because we have both the, uh, the county portion of the uh, proposals and also uh, that which is within the city limits of Tacoma Park. So I thank you for doing this as a joint hearing. I think that makes it much easier for the community and also for the decision makers. Uh, as I said, this is uh, complex because there are the two jurisdictions involved in making the decisions. Now, the, the plan looked at traffic volumes, but the underlying issue in all of this, and I think everybody would, would agree, is uh, safety. And so I think we want to keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, and so I'll, with that, let it move forward. Thank you all for coming and, uh, you know, appreciate the uh, the neighborhood associations that worked on this and also all the people who have come here tonight to share their opinions. Thank you. Are there more chairs that are we chaired out? Yeah, I do know that there is some uh, restriction by our, our video folks about some of that, so. Um, Would they be at? I think, I think people, people could stand over here. Over here. <coughs> yes, people could stand over. But would it be, there is some, a little bit of stacking space over here if the videographer is okay with that. Yeah, yeah that's it. So. Oh, could you, so you're standing in front of the door, perhaps you could open that. Okay. okay. Okay, while that's going on, uh, I will ask people to move in um, as quietly um, and with as little disruption as possible so we can keep going. We have a lot of people who are interested in speaking. 
Um, our first signed up speaker, uh, speaker is Michael uh, Bergeron, and please excuse me if I mutilate your name, I apologize. Bergeron. Bergeron, sorry. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <coughs> How are you doing? My name is Mike Bajeron with um, the uh, Sligo Park Hills community. Also co-chair with Mr. Sam Stokes who spoke earlier. Um, I live actually on um, Park Valley Road which is one of the main uh, streets that we're dealing with the traffic issues and the safety uh, for pedestrians on those streets. I have a couple of several comments here that I just want people to understand what our issues are. Um, currently the county designates our streets as tertiary streets. Um, in our neighborhood uh, streets are generally about 15 feet wide which is well under the normal county minimum um, or below the county standard and the limit for uh, residential street widths. Uh, they're approximately 15 feet wide, no sidewalks, and only one lane wide if there is a parked car on the street, which generally happens a lot. So um, if barely two cars can get down the street and you have a parked car on the side because of a visitor or whatever, uh, you're down to a single lane. This becomes important in, uh, with the pedestrian safety issue. Uh, without sidewalks and a single lane in certain cases, that means that any car coming up or down the street is going to be involved with a pedestrian and it is a little bit of you know of playing the game of chicken between the pedestrian and the car. Um, another comment, uh, the county documented the vehicle count conducted early in 2003 registered that we currently receive over 250 cars on a peak hour and I think St Sam stated a, a more specific number up in the 280s or something. Um, there are at over 100 cars per hour that de designates a peak hour and meets traffic restrictions if the residents so choose so. So we're about three times the amount of traffic. It's time. Yeah, can you just maybe give a wrap-up sentence um, and then give me your written comments? Give okay. us your written I comments. I can do that. Um, so one of the main things I'd like to, to, to close on as far as a safety issue is the amount of school children walking up and down the street with during rush hour. A lot of times it's at night in the fall and, and uh, winter mornings. And also after school, a lot of the kids have dog walking jobs, which means now you have you know dogs and and the children walking okay. and addressing these these uh, these issues. So it's a very dangerous situation that we have in our community, and <coughs> would appreciate. Uh, some recognition okay. and that be dealt with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, I hope you will um, send your comments in as well to KB. I'll give you that information again at the end. Um, the Sam Stokes, you already spoke. The next speaker would be Giuseppe Cimino. Am I saying that correctly? Giuseppe Cimino. Okay, I was close. Okay. Giuseppe Cimino. I'm a lifelong resident of the county. I have lived in Tacoma Park since 1982 and have resided at 303 Hilltop Road since 1989. I joined the project already um, underway um, in Sligo Park Hills in November of 2005. In March of 2006, we briefed our neighbors and the Ritchie Citizens Association on our efforts. Throughout the project, there has been collaboration between the county and the city, with city staff participating in meetings with Sligo Park Hills and the county in May of 2006 and May of 2008. I appreciate this opportunity to speak on behalf of this important public safety project. We have two young children, and my family walks every school day on Hilltop Road. Like most of the roads in the study neighborhoods, we have no sidewalks on Hilltop Road. As shown in the study, this is a major cut-through route with over 178 cars per hour in the morning peak hour, of which over 60% of that traffic is non-local cut-through traffic. Over the years, I have witnessed many accidents in the area. I have witnessed an automobile overturn in front of our house. One of our animals was run over on Hilltop Road. One of the many things that I like about our community at Tacoma Park is the care citizens have for one another and the shared concern for public safety. 
This is a value often found in small towns, and coming from a small town, it is one of the values that my wife also appreciates about our not-so-small town of Tacoma Park. We see the shared value in actions taken in other wards of the city to restrict cut-through traffic. In Ward 1, Old Philadelphia Avenue was made one way. In Ward 2, Manor Circle was reconfigured to include one-way streets to restrict cut-through traffic. In Ward 2, the streets in the northeast corner of the intersection of East-West Highway and New Hampshire Avenue were reconfigured into one-way streets to restrict cut-through traffic. Also in Ward 2, there is a morning rush hour, no right turn sign for traffic on East-West Highway at Jackson Avenue. Here in Ward 5, the intersection of Maple Avenue and Hilltop Road was reconfigured to provide for a safer, more pedestrian-friendly intersection. We are therefore very happy to join the other citizens of Tacoma Park in requesting the implementation of the traffic restrictions outlined in the study to improve the public safety of our roads. We are not asking to vacate roads. We are not asking to block off roads. We are not asking to impose round-the-clock access restrictions. We are not asking to reconfigure the roads into one-way roads. We are, however, asking for weekday morning rush hour restrictions in one direction and weekday evening rush hour restrictions in the opposite direction. There will be an inconvenience. However, like public roads shared by all, this will be an inconvenience shared by all. There will be no exception for local residents. There is no attempt at creating a gated community. In consideration of over five years of community effort and pursuant to the process outlined in Executive Regulation 1794, okay. we respectively, respectfully request that you recommend implement the plan as proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's very hard to get off your comments. So, so we have Olympics. We have speed skating. We run up speed talking. So, good job. Our next speaker is Mr. Wayne Willis. Okay, so you're the mouthpiece for Wayne Willis. Assuming my brain is not fried. Okay. And my name is Sherry Willis, and I live at 121 Ritchie Avenue. I'm here tonight representing the Ritchie Citizens Association in support of the traffic restrictions that have been recommended by the engineers working for Montgomery County and the City of Tacoma Park. But I'm also here as the mother of a small child who has looked out my front window to see a vehicle hurtle around the curve on Ritchie Avenue into my neighbor's front yard and almost hit their house. Believe me, when you're a parent and you see something like this happen, your mind immediately leaps to the possibility of it happening when children or other pedestrians are in the way. And when you know that this has happened several times on that curve on Ritchie Avenue in just the past few years, you begin to feel it's only a matter of time before someone is seriously hurt. The engineers retained by the county and the city recommend the implementation of these restrictions. As Richard, uh, Richard noted, we have actually asked for a more further restriction, a stronger restriction. But we understand that that would cause some inconvenience to members of the surrounding community. What we are trying to do, though, is, is address an essential issue which we think is safety. If you think about the mix of pedestrian traffic on Ritchie Avenue right now, we have a daycare center on Geneva Avenue, and the kids walk several times a day in nice weather to Hefner Park without the benefit of a crosswalk. They cross Ritchie Avenue. They walk up and down Ritchie Avenue to Piney Branch several times a day in nice weather. Parents, caregivers, small children from our neighborhood walk regularly to Hefner Park. Throw into that mix the vehicle traffic on Ritchie Avenue. And Ritchie is a secondary residential street, okay, but it has myriad school buses during the day. It has myriad Department of Public Work trucks. It has much cut through traffic from PG County and the District of Columbia. Many of these vehicles travel at speeds well above the speed limit despite the presence of multiple speed bumps. When you combine this high volume of traffic with a very high rate of pedestrian use, you have a significant amount of risk to those pedestrians. The engineers concluded that if the Sligo Park Hills restrictions are implemented, we on Ritchie will see even more traffic. Now, I know there are concerns about additional traffic on Philadelphia, but as Richard mentioned, the engineers have determined that the actual increase would be small. So we ask you, our neighbors in Tacoma Park, to join with us to keep additional traffic away from our kids and other pedestrians. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is... Uh, Pepe Contreras. Good evening, I'm Pepe Contreras Vidal. I live at 117 Richie Avenue, a neighbor of, of Wayne and Cherry Willis. I live around the curve, and I have seen also uh, accidents there, a very close encounter, including fire trucks with cars coming in the opposite direction, and also and sometimes we have only one lane, and, and uh, increasing the traffic is going to uh, impact uh, the safety. And um, I voted for the more restrictive option because I think safety is first and prevention.
follows very closely, and the best way to prevent any accidents is to go for more restrictive uh, conditions. We have a lot of traffic already. We, in fact, uh, um, at the association on Richie Avenue, Geneva, um, as we go, uh, we ask the city to uh, put another uh, speed bump very close to, our, in fact, between our, our houses, Willis and myself, and uh, to try to reduce the traffic. And, you know, that, that's uh, um, just a, another example of the already uh, um, excess uh, of traffic that we have on our streets. We don't have sidewalks on both sides. Uh, 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 we don't have barriers to separate children from the traffic as on, on Piney Branch. We have a daycare with people walking to the park, the playgrounds on Oswego. Um, we have uh, our senior cities that we need to take care to, our children. We have our bikers that commute. Um, I, my family uses a bike to, to go to work. And I think um, I, I, you all will agree that safety has to come first. And we need to prevent problems before they happen. And, uh, and we are asking to support the most restrictive option, uh, do not enter at the, at the rush hours. I think the, uh, there is some inconvenience with that, but I guess um, uh, safety has to come first. And, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, our next, we're, we're going to tell you the next two speakers so we can have the next speaker and then get the next one on deck. Uh, Frank uh, Demarius, Demarius, and then after Frank Demarius is Herman Boma. Okay, hi. hi. Frank Demarais, live on Maple Avenue, 8006, and we are on the other side of the new restrictions. And I want to just read one thing from Regulation 1794 that says, one resident's use of the public roads for necessary travel to work, school, shopping, or the library must be perceived by another resident as an excessive traffic uh, inconvenience and presence and we live on the side of this barrier if you map all these roads that are closing down that map you're gonna get a one mile long barrier from Sligo Creek Parkway to Philadelphia Avenue east west ingress and egress from my neighborhood from my house is going to be restricted all the traffic studies here measure a large volume of traffic we have good friends in Sligo Park Hills we think there's serious issues here but if there's serious numbers of cars that are going serious numbers of cars going through that neighborhood, there have to be a serious number of cars being diverted. The study counts 106 cars being diverted, 53 cars going to Piney Branch and East and um, Philadelphia, 53 cars going to Sligo and Piney Branch. The study measures over 700 cars in the a.m. rush hour and in the evening, 535 cars by my count. Very hard to do in the study. You've got to count all those little numbers. But it only counts 46 of those going diverted. So these analyses that say limited impact are counting, in my count, only 14% of the through traffic that will be diverted. There's a material weakness in the way the study works with non-local traffic not being counted as diverted. So I am non-local. I live within three-quarters of a mile of the restricted streets. My car doesn't count as a diverted car in the impact. The intersections at Piney Branch and Sligo, Piney Branch and Philadelphia, are already stressed. If you take half of the cars in the study and divert them equally, you will increase the traffic at each of those intersections by 25 to 30 percent. You also have material weakness in this time analysis. The analysis in the study has only measures part of the traffic distance only, and leaves it about a third of the measured distance from point A to point B. And so there's very weak, significant weaknesses in the studies. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. You've, again, submit your written comments. You've given a lot of thought to the data. Uh, Herman Boma is next, and then uh, Kathy Faint is after Herman. Is Herman here? Okay, Kathy Faint, are you here? Uh, Stephen Cade, my husband, is going to speak for me. Okay, where I'm is... Right here next to me. Okay, go right over there, please. And then the, after that, uh, oh, well, Stephen Haig, you're, you're, you're already on there. And then we have Wayne Willis is on here again. So Wayne, obviously, uh, Sherry, you've spoken for Wayne. I'm sorry. Let me get. Why don't you sit down and I'll come back to this. Okay. Um, Mr. 
Stephen Who do we Hague. have now? Stephen Haig. Mr. Haig. Thank you. I'm Steve Haig. I live at uh, 1007 Elm Avenue. We are, like the previous speaker, um, not in the, in the exact, in the um, direct area. We are, um, we've been met residents of Tacoma Park uh, for, I've been a resident of the area for, for most of my life, and we've been, uh, we bought our first house here in Tacoma Park in 82. And it's, um, and we use all these streets to get around. We are here because we want to make sure that we, we represent the, the folks who are not cut through traffic, so to speak. We actually live in the area, but we don't, but we, and we use all these streets. And um, we also appreciate the safety factors of all this, this discussion. We, we um, also understand that there's, there are, um, that the, um, uh, uh, that we, that we need, that, that it's only affecting uh, rush hour traffic. Um, it, it, the, um, and so we, we just want to make sure that, that this group understands that there are folks who are, I'm part of that 40% who is not the, the, from some other area. We're, like the man said earlier with a more prepared statement, we are part of this, this neighborhood. We are your neighbors, but we are also um, uh, not in the, in, the, in the exact area. Uh, Elm Avenue, of course, is a cut-through street to begin with, and um, this is an urban, urban neighborhood. The sidewalks, I think, are our main concern. We think that the, the whole idea of diverting traffic is only one way to solve the problem, and it would be good way to it would be good to to figure out other ways. Sidewalks are a good thing. Some of these streets cannot have sidewalks. I understand. Um, so um, we will submit written statement, but um, but I just want to make sure that you know we're with you. We're your neighbors. We are also have some trouble with the inconvenience. But we're here for the discussion. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, is Wayne Willis here? He is not here. Okay. Sherry Willis, you spoke. Pardon me? You spoke. Okay. Um, Jonathan Weiss, and then on deck would be Catherine Tunis. Is Jonathan Weiss here? No? Okay. Is Catherine Tunis here? No, okay. Next would be uh, Leslie Brownrig, and then Fran Rothstein would be on deck. Is Leslie Brownrig here? I, and if I'm botching the names up, is that Brownrig, right? Yes, okay. Yeah, Brownrig. Okay. How about Fran Rothstein? Is Fran Rothstein here? Okay, and then behind Fran Rothstein will be Terry Clifford. Good evening. I'm Fran Rothstein. Gabe Seiden, right here, and I are co-presidents of the Sligo Park Hills Neighborhood Association, representing 296 households. Our neighborhood association strongly supports the residential traffic management plan that is before you this evening. We've heard from many residents who are deeply troubled by increased cut-through traffic and strongly support this plan. Others prefer even more aggressive measures. That's others in Sligo Park Hills, in addition to the ones in, in um, Ritchie Citizens Association, but would accept this plan as a reasonable compromise. The current situation jeopardizes resident safety, undermines personal property and public streets, and reduces quality of life. Drivers seem to view speed humps and pedestrians as mere annoyances, rather than as reminders to drive more carefully. A neighbor on Mississippi Avenue with hearing loss is often frightened by cars speeding by on our narrow streets and says she's nearly been run down on several occasions. Pedestrians are in constant danger as our streets have no sidewalks. Residents are equally endangered when they are in their cars. During rush hour, cut-through drivers regularly go right through stop signs, not even slowing down much of the time. A Parkside Road resident who's lived there since 1951 and teaches at Montgomery College has difficulty exiting her driveway to get to her job because of traffic volume. Other neighbors can't get out of their driveways during morning rush hour because of long lines of cars waiting to enter or cross Piney Branch Road and that are blocking their driveways. Some parents have resorted to driving their children the relatively short distances to nearby schools rather than jeopardize their safety by letting them walk, thus contributing unnecessarily to traffic congestion, needless gasoline use, air pollution, and the child obesity epidemic. <laughs> it's true. 
The changes we seek would add less than 60 seconds to the average cut through driver's commute. That's not my estimate. That's what the traffic engineers have estimated. Some years ago, the Tacoma Park Middle School PTA pleaded for a traffic signal on Piney Branch Road at the intersection where students cross the street and cars enter and exit the parking lot. Our request fell on deaf ears until a car injured a young child at that very intersection. She ended up in the hospital quite seriously injured. I beg the county, don't wait until a similar tragedy demands your intervention. Please do the right thing now. Vote in support of the proposed rush hour restrictions. Okay, Thank now. you. Wait, wait, wait. Excuse me. Ms. Ms. Rothstein, you are, and I didn't get the other gentleman's name, and then I wanted to get the name of the association. Okay. Gabe Seiden, S-E-I-D-E-N. Okay. And we're the co-presidents of the Sligo Park Hills Neighborhood Association. Okay. Which covers the, the whole area, the whole Sligo Park Hills part of uh, the, the area covered by this plan. Okay. Pardon me? It's a, is it different or the same? No. The same. Oh, okay. If we're okay, same, thank you. Sam is the traffic guy. We're the co-presidents. Okay. Same association. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um... Terry Clifford? No? No Terry Clifford? Uh, Gabe Seiden? Did Gabe Seiden, did you have, want to speak as an individual? No? Okay. Uh, you're on the list. Robert Ferguson. Okay. And then is Seth Grimes here also? All right. After Robert Ferguson will be Bill O'Brien then. Is Bill O'Brien here? Uh, how about Karen O'Brien? Okay. Uh, Melissa Kasovic? Okay, you'll be, did you? I didn't sign up to speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well let's go, let's go with who we know here. <laughs> we have a speaker who's willing to speak. My name is Robert Ferguson. Um, I have a family and we live in Sligo Park Hills on Sussex Road. It is not one that receives high volume of traffic, but it does have uh, the more aggressive drivers who decide that uh, they can't wait going up Park Valley. Um, we all know these roads are not designed to support the quantity of traffic they receive, uh, but this commuter traffic is also very aggressive. It disregards laws and speeds through the neighborhood at fantastic rates. The children in our neighborhood attend East Silver Spring Elementary School. It's in the upper left-hand portion of that map. Uh, and Tacoma Park Middle School, uh, which is down uh, bottom third on the left. In spite of being very close to these schools, the minute our children step out the front door to walk to school, they are in danger of being mowed down. Something must be done. Our neighborhood has patiently and diligently gone through the steps to get to this point. The plan before us represents one of the least radical options considered by the neighborhood and the county. I understand that there is opposition but it is not enough to criticize the plan. Some solution must be proposed. The status quo simply is not acceptable. Thank you very much. How about uh, Jessica Moore? Oh, yeah. Okay, and Deborah Jones, is Deborah Jones here? My daughter's name is Deborah Jones. <laughs> this would not be my daughter. It's even spelled the same. Is Deborah Jones here? No, okay. Uh, Toby Jacobs? No. Okay. Troy Jacobs. It says Troy. I don't have my glasses oh. on. So are you? Okay. I You'll be on deck. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm here tonight to speak in support of the residential traffic management plan for the Sligo Park Hills and the city of Tacoma Park communities. If I can make one point tonight only, it is this. Convenience should not outweigh safety. I'm a resident of, resident of Sligo Park Hills at 5 Park Valley Road. I have lived at this address since 1997. The amount of traffic on our cut-through street, especially during morning and evening rush hours, has increased dramatically since we moved in. This amount of traffic is dangerous for residents and property. Convenience should not outweigh safety. My husband and I have three daughters, two of whom are school-aged. We have been walking to our elementary school bus stop across Lego Creek Parkway since 2003. To get there, we walk down Park Valley Road. This is a narrow road without sidewalks, barely wide enough for cars moving in opposite directions to pass one another. It is decidedly not wide enough for two cars, one adult, two walking children, and a stroller. 
We are often forced into driveways to allow speeding vehicles to pass. Convenience should not outweigh safety. Occasionally, we drive to the bus stop. This option is a last resort, however, as it often takes longer to wait for backed up traffic to subside so that we may exit our driveway than it does to walk the five blocks to the bus stop. Our daughters are not allowed to play in our front yard due to concerns regarding the amount of traffic on the road. Cars, ambulances, fire trucks, and school buses all use this road as cut through for their convenience. Convenience should not outweigh safety. Our narrow side roads were not built to withstand the amount of traffic they used to handle, currently handle, nor the increase they are projected to handle. The existing rush hour volume is approaching three times the volume that qualifies our roads for restriction consideration, and this amount is expected to increase in the future. Convenience should not outweigh safety. Other routes may be less convenient. However, other routes have wider rows. Other routes have sidewalks. Other roads were built to accommodate more cars and more, cars and more traffic at greater speeds. Convenience does not outweigh safety. I love my neighborhood. Alleviating the amount of rush hour traffic would improve safety dramatically. I encourage your full support of the residential traffic management plan to help keep our neighborhood and its residents safe. Thank you very much. Okay, Troy Jacobs. That is correct. Um, I'm Dr. Troy Jacobs. I'm a father of a three-year-old girl who frequently wants to run out in the streets, a homeowner in uh, Tacoma Park, Ward 5. I live on Flower Avenue, and I've also been a pediatrician that's worked in a major trauma center where I've tried to put back together people who have uh, been hit by cars and things like that. Um, I want to say... I share some I, I share the concerns that have been expressed by the folks in the Ritchie and the Saligo, um Park Hills community. Nevertheless, uh, for being in Ward 5, I'd say that we are not necessarily in complete agreement as to how to resolve these issues. Um, and I'm hopeful that we'll actually be able to, to find some way to actually um, reach some type of compromise. The study doesn't really address um, the, the issues of this uh, peninsula, really, of Ward 5 there, which you can see on the map. Um, and the issue of being isolated. Uh, we certainly have neighbors and, and friends in the areas that you're describing that we commute and do other things with. Um, second, um, there is the issue of diversion. Um, and certainly being on Flower Avenue, we think about this a lot, which is the border of Ward 5. Um, there was a uh, State Highway admission, uh, Administration uh, study that was done in t September of 2003 um, on traffic calming for Flower Avenue. And I think the bulk of those recommendations were not implemented. And I feel in some ways like it's putting the horse before the cart to consider uh, the impact on some of these smaller roads when we haven't actually dealt with the issues on these larger roads. And I think that what we need to actually consider is a careful implementation of um, these recommendations so that they don't adversely affect this peninsula uh, that is, exists for Ward 5 because we actually use some of those streets, as some of the other folks had said, uh, to get out of our neighborhood. Um, and then, uh, two, to seek a prioritized, fa prioritized phased, phased in approach that would be contingent upon these other traffic calming studies that have been not yet implemented. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Sandra Tassel. Is Sandra here? Okay, and then behind Sandra would be Eric Liebman. Eric Liebman, are you here? Okay, so you're up after. There will be, and somebody brought this paper. There was paper was up in the back, um, so why don't we put it here and people can sign up? Yeah. We, yes, you, we, yes, let's do this. Let us get through the speakers. We will take written comments. They can be sent in electronically. I will repeat the information again uh, at the end of this hearing. Okay, uh, Ms. Tassel, you're up next, please. Good evening. I'm here to testify. Can you, uh, excuse me, one second. I'm sorry. I, I would ask you to please do it quietly. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm Sandra Tassel, and I live in the Sligo Park Hills neighborhood. And I experience the cut through traffic every day. But I mainly wanted to bring forward a little bit of history for the record 
that I think has uh, some bearing on this decision and our ability collectively to make a wise and informed decision. <clears throat> When Sligo Park Hills was dedicated in the late 1920s, it was out in the country. It was right at the edge of the urban area. If you look back on the history of people actually moving into their homes, they came out by trolley. A trolley went out uh, what is now Piney Branch Road. And so the roads in our neighborhoods were designed to accommodate this very rural neighborhood at that time. There were still farms out there. One of the original residents described in a 1970s history how her family went to Silver Spring in a Model T to get their groceries. Model T's had a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour. I've seen people drive through the stop sign in front of my house during rush hour traffic going faster than that, I think. In the broader context, in 1925, just a couple of years before Sligo Park Hills was platted, in the United States there was only one car for every six people. That was the world for which these streets were designed. In 1941, there was one car for every four Americans. In 2001, we had one car for every 2.1 Americans. The point that I'm making is that our county has grown tremendously during this time, and there has been a tremendous amount of development around that neighborhood. It's no wonder we're struggling here tonight over traffic. We don't uh, have children allowed to walk or ride their bikes to school. All of these changes have happened while the roads in our neighborhood have remained narrow and winding. They are artifacts from a different era and arguably less navigable. I just wanted to ask uh, that we consider that it is truly unfair to ask our neighborhood to bear the burden of these changes that have occurred around the neighborhood, and it's unfair to ask taxpayers of Montgomery County to shoulder the costs of maintaining and repairing the roads that have been damaged by the tremendous number of traffic when they were built for Model Ts. Okay, thank you. Okay, Eric Liebman and then Mary uh, Curio. Okay, so you're next after. Hi, my name's Eric Liebman. I live on the corner of Carroll and Lincoln, so I don't live on, on any of the streets and that are being considered today. How, however, I, I think we all have the same traffic problems that you do, and I live in a much more dangerous corner than you guys do, and how I have sympathy, you guys have to understand there are others in the neighborhood. I take Richie every morning to work because it's direct. I began doing so when my kids went to middle school. It is the only route from where I live to the middle school. It would be absurd to close it at this point and make people drive all over creation to get to that destination. I did my own personal survey of traffic at 8.15 Monday morning using that street. The total count was one. That was me. There is no traffic on that street. It, it, there is a sidewalk on that street, and I don't know what people are, 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 are really looking at. Whatever the outcome of the... I'm going to ask this crowd to please allow the speaker to speak. Every single person is entitled to be heard. Thank you. Go ahead. Whatever the outcome of the Sligo Hills closure is dealing with Richie now based on only vague projections of possible future problems would be terribly premature. Um, from a planning perspective, the very notion of closing secondary streets to, to, through traffic runs completely counter to what has become the accepted approach among environmentalists, smart growth planners, and new urbanists in dealing with the issue of traffic congestion in our high density close in suburbs. The solution isn't to force additional traffic onto already saturated arterials where idling traffic spews pollution and fosters road rage. These are the dangerous streets. These are the streets where people have died. The accepted remedy is not to reduce the number of secondary streets, but just the opposite, to create as many through streets as possible, to let traffic course freely and democratically through all our neighborhoods at a controlled rate of speed. In fact, the U.S. Green Building Council, in recently finalizing its lead rating system for neighborhood development, actually awards credits for maximizing the number of public through streets and usable intersections within new developments. A, a successful street network is not static. It is an interconnected yeah. organic whole. If a particular street reaches any level of congestion, drivers will switch to an alternate route to keep moving. Okay, Multiple I'm options are sorry, key. Mr. Mr. Lehman, you're um, out of time. 
I, we gave you a little bit of extra time because I uh, needed to ask people to be quiet, but can you submit the remainder of your Just make one more comment. The assumption that narrow streets are necessarily more dangerous is patently incorrect. It might seem counterintuitively, but in fact, statistics show that the narrow streets are the safest. There's a great book called Skinny Streets and Green philosophy. Neighborhoods. I recommend people read it. I understand the philosophy and I understand the trend. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker uh, is Mary Curio. Yes. And then behind Mary Curio will be Diana Cohn. Is Diana Cohn here? Diana Cohn, I see your hand back there. Okay, so you'll be up after Mary. I, I live at 7504 Carroll Avenue, two, two doors away from Eric. And you know what? I've seen accidents too. Someone crashed into his fence, someone crashed into my wall. So safety is an issue all over the place. The history, I'm winging this. I had prepared statements, but I'm winging it based on the comments I've heard today. The history everybody's talking about affects everybody in Tacoma Park. It doesn't just affect the people who live in Sligo Creek Hills or Ritchie Avenue. Years ago, there was a Model T Ford driving at 45 miles an hour down East West Highway. Well, that is now a thousand Model T Fords that the people in Sligo Creek Hills, and for those of them who were speaking for Tacoma Park, they weren't. They were speaking for Sligo Creek Hills. But they don't want them diverted onto their roads. But you know what? And it, and it was like not compelling to me that they're not concerned with anyone else's convenience, that, well, the fact that someone else will be convenienced is okay with them. It's not going to take me one more minute. I use Ritchie Avenue to get my child to Tacoma Park Middle School. It probably is a five-minute drive using Ritchie Avenue. If I have to get on to Philadelphia Avenue, it's going to take me a half hour easily. Oh, and, you know, if you want me to time that, I'll time that and put it in my comments. It sounds to me like Sligo Creek Hills needs sidewalks. It sounds to me like, you know, that would be the safety issue. It sounds to me like I bought my house on Carroll Avenue 20 years ago saying did I want a, a busy street, but it's exponentially more busy today. People bought their houses in Sligo Creek Hills and on Ritchie Avenue. You don't buy a house in a community and say, well, now I don't want the other members of the community and Tacoma Park is the community to drive here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, Di oh, sorry, Diana Cohn is next, and after Diana Cohn's, Cohn is Denise Jones. Denise yes. Jones here? Okay. You're up after uh, Ms. Cohn. My name is Diana Cohn. I live at 16 Jefferson Avenue which is just outside the district that's being talked about. My main reason for being here tonight is to ask a question, and I know I don't get an answer tonight, but I would like to raise this question. Um, I know there was a traffic study done in Sligo Hills, and there was a traffic study done on Ritchie Avenue, and I would like more information on the width of this traffic study on the surrounding streets. My understanding is, I know that Tacoma Park Elementary School has been closed for the last year. When that school is reopened, the buses will come off Philadelphia, which they have never done before. So my question is whether the traffic study, which was done while the school was closed, has any way of judging what the traffic pattern is going to be like once the school is open. And I do know from discussions of, of Tacoma Junction, which is the next big intersection over from Philadelphia and Maple, that the people at the, there were restrictions done at Manor Circle, which forced the traffic onto Franklin. There were restrictions done on Franklin, which forced the traffic on El, onto Elm. As it is now, you, during rush hour, you can't get up Philadelphia Avenue. It is blocked from Philadelphia and Maple all the way to New Hampshire. And I don't know when you do a traffic study to what degree you consider the, the ripple effect as it keeps moving out further and further and further. And I agree with the, with the folks who 
would like to look at the various, ram the various solutions and not just a traffic <coughs> restriction solution. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Okay, the, the, that was Diana Cohn. The next speaker will be Denise Jones. And then after Denise Jones is, um, can I, is Stephen Moore, please? Is Stephen Moore here? Okay, after Stephen Moore would be Ellen uh, Durkee. Ellen Durkee? Okay, all right. Uh, Ms. Jones. I live on Maple Avenue between Hilltop, Sligo Creek Parkway, and Ritchie Avenue. I've lived in Tacoma Park for the last 15 years. Those most greatly affected by these proposals are those local residents who live at the bottom of the hill. We have a right to unfettered egress and vehicular use of roadways in our town. Personally, I drive my daughter to catch her school bus at 6.55 a.m. to downtown Silver Spring in the morning by driving up the hill to cross Piney Branch, either at Ritchie Avenue or Hilltop. If I were to be diverted to go around via Philadelphia or Flower to Wayne, I would at least double the time, not one minute, to, uh, that it takes me uh, to drive. I'm sorry, excuse me one second. I'm going to ask you to leave, please. Really, it's, I, I can't hear the speaker. Okay, thank you. Um... But never mind me, how about the other apartment dwellers, local residents you seem to have completely ignored? There are 135 units in my building alone. Add the units in the other eight buildings and you have apartment buildings and you have tens of hundreds that are adversely affected, effectively corralled by these proposals to go about their normal morning business of chauffeuring kids to school and getting to their places of employment. Let's consider the hundreds of families that live here in Tacoma Park who must take their kids to Tacoma Park Middle. Those folks would be entangled on Philadelphia with Metro Bus, Ride on Bus, School Buses, Westbound Traffic on Philadelphia, and Traffic Bound for the two elementary schools. Ritchie Avenue Association argues that they're concerned about the safety of their children. Everyone is concerned about safety in Tacoma Park. Uh, but pardon me, they have yards for their children. And unlike Sligo Hills Association, they do have a sidewalk buffer. And um, if they're particularly concerned about the safety of their children at play in the yards, then you need to go on outside and be with your kids. A yard does not guarantee you freedom from traffic. Uh, and this brings me back to around to my beginning. I'm greatly opposed to the 80 or so home dwellers in Ritchie Avenue, Oswego, and Geneva, and the 296, but not all, in Sligo hills dictating the use of public roadways in Tacoma Park. We live in a 21st century. This is a metropolitan bedroom community, and we all have to deal with traffic. My name is Ellen Durkee. I live on Jefferson Avenue. I live approximately one-tenth of a mile between the two restricted intersections proposed on Maple. I'm going to set aside the anecdotal things, but I do want to say I care about the safety of your children, and I care about the safety of my children, and I resent this being completely uh, painted as convenience versus safety. There is more to this debate than that. And I would like to point to, uh, in my short time, the county criteria for this kind of traffic restriction. The policy and the letter of the law is that you cannot get traffic restrictions to bar local traffic. And that is exactly what is happening on some of these streets. The study that in the proposal to you shows that in the study, 100% of the traffic on Ritchie was local. Now, I understand that nobody wants volume on their street, but the reality is these are people that are both technically in the law local and people like me that live, that are, that are your neighbors. I'm essentially an extension of your street. Secondly, the criteria requires that there be a consideration on impacts on adjacent communities. My community is not even mentioned in this study. Carroll is mentioned as part of the roadway, but there's an entire residential district between Carroll and Maple that is never even alluded to, and there will be spillover effect. Third, there must be consideration of impact on arterial major road networks. We all know how uh, congested Philadelphia is, and the study shows that it gets an F for oversaturated traffic conditions and excessive delay. I don't see how adding to that is something that is just a, 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 no, a non-problem. Finally, impact on public facilities and other community destinations, it must be considered. 
I'll just say you've heard them. They want to get off buses. They want to get city streets. They want uh, they want uh, cop cars off. They don't want to be able to use this to, to go to school. It impacts access. Uh, it's a practical matter to all these things. Okay, thank you, Ms. Durkee. Um, our next speaker is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Kevin Cohen. Is Kevin Cohen here? Okay, and then after Kevin Cohen is Pamela, and I can't see this one at all. Can Magna. you see? Magnus? Magna. Okay, Magna. okay, Pamela Magna. Hi, um, I'm Kevin Cohen, and I represent the Sligo Park Hill Association. Yo, yes, I live in there. Um, I get off at the bus at 3 o'clock, and I've, like, gotten inches away from being hit. And that is disturbing. My brother has actually gotten hit, um, backing out, I mean, um, with his bike on Sligo, on Hilltop Road. Um, that, that's just like, and that's just like crazy. And there's people who go down the street that I see who go full speed, like, like they don't even stop. And, and I'm just, I'm just like my safety, everyone else's safety. That's just like, I don't know. It's, it's scary. Um, um, I, I do admit that I sometimes speed a little bit and don't stop at stop signs, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, there's a lot of honking going on. Um, I, I'm kind of opposed to that, kind of not, but kind of disturbs me when I'm doing homework, but that's just me, so. Um, uh, um, I think that's it. Okay. Oh, yes, one other thing. Um, well, you, you actually have a little bit of time. So. Okay, um, I'm, I know some of you guys might dream about, like, a dream street in a movie where um, it, there's, the kids are playing safely and then they're playing nicely, and but not just scratch the part when there's, like, a horror movie. But um, I know you dream of nice streets, but still we need – actually, I have no idea what I'm going at here, so never well, mind. You know what? Take your time to collect your thoughts and send them to us in writing. We'd be happy to receive them, okay? Thank you. Okay, so uh, Pamela Magnus is next, and then after uh, Pamela is, this is Darren Cavan. Do I have Don or Darren. Do we have a Don or a Darren? Where? Dave. David, David, maybe? David. Cannon. No? Well, you're here, so you signed in, but we'll <laughs> skip over you. Uh, and then Nan uh, Schellebarger. Okay, you'll be next. My name is Pamela Magna. I've lived at 317 Lincoln Avenue in Tacoma Park for 18 years, and prior to that, I lived on Ritchie Avenue for five years. And I'm going to end up deviating from my statement a little bit again in response to some of the comments here. We, don't, we do not support the proposals, okay? Everybody is concerned about safety, safety, and so I'm going to deviate a little bit because I think people have to be honest about some of the things, okay? We've all been on some of these streets when they've been overtaxed during rush hour. We've also been on these streets during rush hour when there has been no cars. You have to understand the traffic studies are studies. They're at particular points in time on a random day. Okay? One thing I want to say is the Ritchie study, while it's better than the Sligo Creek study, the Sligo Hills study, it doesn't, it, you can't find support for it. It's trying to suit, it, you're trying to bootstrap the lack of really a lot of traffic on Ritchie Avenue with the Sligo Hills. The Sligo Hills study is trash. The data is based, for someone, I, my job is to analyze technical reports. I've, I'm an economist. I've done it for 20 years. The data comes from three different points in time. The data is internally inconsistent in the, in the Sligo Hills study. And the people here that are here, I've been on PTAs with the people. These people are smart. And it's disingenuous to then say, okay, well, let's look at this study, and this study supports what I want. But you have to be honest about it. There are so many problems with this study. Everybody knows in this room, because they live in this community, saying that imposing these restrictions is going to result in a minute increase in their commute. Everybody knows that's trash. Come on, let's be honest. So, yes, I know this is a safety concern. 
I was going to come in and say, you know, in response to this, maybe the, maybe the solution is to make some of these roads one way. But what, you didn't consider that. And on the basis of what's in here, you need to reject the proposal. It's incredibly bad precedent. The county was sloppy. This is a bad study. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, Nan Schellerberger's next, and then Melanie Isis. Okay, you're up on deck after. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nan Schellerberger, and I've lived at 8403 Park Crest Drive in Sligo Park Hills since 1997. I'm also currently a daily caregiver to my niece and nephews who live at 119 Hilltop Road. These children have attended East Silver Spring Elementary, Piney Branch Elementary, and currently are at Tacoma Park Middle School and Blair High School. They have waited for buses, walked to and fro from school, walked up and down Hilltop to get to the park, this community center, and many other places. We take our dogs for weekly walks in Sligo Creek Park. All of these trips are hazardous. There are no sidewalks and no possibility of sidewalks and steep hills, making it hard to find anywhere to walk outside the roadways. We were pleased to see the traffic calming techniques of bumps and humps and even unrepaired potholes that appeared, <laughs> and we hoped they would slow down the traffic, but they really haven't slowed down the get to work or get home traffic at rush hour. The asymmetric stop signs at the bottom of Hilltop with Sunnyside Parkside in Geneva and halfway up the hill at Park Crest are often completely ignored. I admit that the proposed restrictions will be inconvenient for my family. It will interfere with our numerous trips to ferry the kids to their afternoon activities. It will make us less attractive carpool participants. We strongly believe that the safety payoff from reduced traffic is more than worth any inconvenience to us or to others. We're hopeful that it might in fact make the kids walk more. More than a decade ago, a little girl was actually killed on Piney Branch while walking home from school, and that finally goaded the authorities to narrow and slow the traffic on Piney Branch and make sure there are adequate sidewalks. We don't have sidewalks, we can't have sidewalks on Hilltop, and let's not wait for a similar tragedy. tragedy. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we have Melanie Isis, and then uh, behind Melanie Isis is Ellen Zavian. Hi, I'm, I'm Melanie Isis, and I, um, I live in East Silver Spring, which is the neighborhood right across Piney Ranch Road. Um, I live on Gist Avenue, which becomes Ray Drive at the middle school. And my street is a major cut-through street because it's the only s through street between Fenton Street and Piney Branch, other than Philadelphia. And the traffic was so bad that they put a traffic circle in to, to calm it in my neighborhood. But I've been living there for 21 years, and I've seen the traffic increase. But I've heard so many things tonight that I'm just going to re resonate with me. We live in an inner ring suburb. We live in a densely populated community. Part of why we chose to, to live in this area is we can walk to a lot of places. For people who moved into Sligo Park Hills, which is a charming neighborhood, exclusive, right next to the park, they knew there wasn't any sidewalks. That's what they liked. People who live over by uh, Four Corners didn't want sidewalks either at the new Blair High School. They fought them down. I know the people here want their side, they want safety, but safety means sidewalks, and that means taking right away. Um, they like the narrow roads. There is truth in what someone else said. The narrow roads make people slow down. So do parked cars. As soon as you make the roads wider, people speed up. Um, accidents happen. They happen everywhere, as we've heard from a number of speakers. I haven't heard of any fatalities, by the way, in Sligo Park Hills. It's not that we want to wait for a fatality to happen, but all I hear is fear. Everywhere around Silver Spring, there is an intense traffic. Part of it is the revitalization of, of Silver Spring. Part of it is the fact that Philadelphia Avenue is never going to get any wider. And the whole east-west uh, commute is why the Purple Line has been proposed. There is not any more outlets. When I'm heading eastbound, I cannot get onto Piney Branch Road. Um, 
Ellen Zavian and then Joshua Bernstein after uh, Ms. Zavian. Hi, my name is Ellen Zavian and I reside on Sherman Avenue, which was not part of your study. How it could not be part of your study is overwhelming to me. We will be impacted by moving your traffic over to us. And your neighborhood is no imp more important, your kids are no more important, and more convenience is no more important. I walk everywhere. I don't even get in my car if I don't have to. And I am absolutely perturbed that you would present a study that's half-ass. Number two, you fail to even look at the junction issues. You're moving traffic supposedly through East West Highway and Carroll. Junction fails in every aspect that five star people walk sideways, they walk against the traffic. That's where your study should start. The fire station has been moved and you're studying how traffic is. What happens when the fire station opens and it gets to Carroll and, and Piney Branch? Then maybe you should look at your study when the busiest station is in full bloom and it's larger and we have all our trucks back. That's when the study should take place. So I, I absolutely oppose this half-assed study and I send you back. I'm a professor. I'd give you a failing grade. Uh, Joshua Bernstein and then uh, Ann McHenry. Okay. So as my understanding is that I live on Elwyn Court, which is right off of Mississippi Avenue, and it's in the Sligo Hills area, but also in Tacoma Park. So we're in both places, and we're affected by all the cut-through traffic as well. Um, a couple points. First, um, I understand that I'm going to be inconvenienced by this because I'm not going to be able to, for example, in the afternoon, leave my house and go uh, towards the south to get out. I'll have to go all the way around. And that bothers me a little bit, but I don't care because I guess I get the benefit from the flip side of the convenience. So I understand people who get inconvenienced but don't also benefit. I'm sorry. Um, so I have a two-year-old. We have lots and lots of two-year-olds around. They're going to be three, four, and five. And we go walking down Mississippi Avenue. And where the car parked, it's about this wide. I would love for there to be a sidewalk, but there can't be one. There's a ravine on one side. It's impossible. All we can do is hope that the cars slow down. Now, in the recent snowstorm, we all experienced a little bit of what it's like to get stuck in traffic and a little bit of that road rage. So we're sitting there in the car, and I know for me, when I get stuck in traffic, I look for an alternate route. But I'm pissed, right? And I'm in a hurry to get somewhere. And so I'm going fast. And it's not my neighborhood. I'm not thinking about it. There's a stop sign. Well, I'll just roll through it because I'm trying to get around that traffic. That's a lot different than a lot of the nice voices here who come from within the community and have to drive through. But what we're looking at is these people zooming through, like I do in other people's neighborhoods, because I get that road rage when there's all that snow around. We all know what it's like. And the last thing, what you want to do is get there fast. You're late, you want to get home, and that's when accidents happen. And that's the kind of traffic we're trying to we're trying to reduce here. And that's the kind of traffic that scares me because they don't stop at the stop sign at Elwyn Court. They just go right through. So uh, keep that mindset in mind, and that's what we're trying to stop. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Anne McHenry and then Elena Grassi. Ms. Grassi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ann McHenry, and I live in Sligo Park Hills. I live on Piney Branch Road, and I want to talk about my experience just as somebody who walks through the neighborhood every morning. I go walking down to the park, and I'm on Parkside, and I will do this in the morning and at night. And I want to tell you, it's really, really dangerous. The cars are just flying down there. I have never seen anybody stop at the stop sign at the bottom of that hill. 
I never have. And the roads are really, really narrow. There's no sidewalk, but there's also no way that you could jump up on the curb there because there's lots of trees there. And you can't really see too far because the roads are windy. There's hills there. There's parked cars. So the cars coming don't have very good visibility. And the pedestrians don't have good visibility either, so they cannot see what's coming. I have been hit almost, well, close to maybe 10 times, and I have actually been hit one time from a car whizzing by who just like put his hand on the horn and a side view mirror hit my, hit my arm. So I just want to say that there have been accidents that have happened. It's very, very dangerous to do that. And I can't really see of another way other than just stopping some of these um, cut through cars. And you know that they're cut through cars because they're just flying along really fast. The neighborhood cars know that people are in the, in the streets because there's no other place to walk. So I just want to say that it really is a dangerous situation. Thank you. Okay, um, so this is Elena Grassi and then Richard Lawn. Lane, Lawn? Richard Lawn, okay. So go ahead, Ms. Grassi. Hi, my name is Elena Grasti, and I live at 117 Ritchie Avenue. I'm the mother of three very active children that live in our home. And um, I heard some of the previous comments talking about, um, you know, making a statement that our traffic on Ritchie Avenue is 100% local, and we should not be, you know, limiting our local traffic. Well, I want to call your attention to the limitations of the study that was done regarding the Ritchie Avenue traffic. Um, two nights ago, we met with the traffic engineer that did that study, and I'm an engineer myself, so I totally understand the limitations. You know, and when you do a study, you have to sort of go by the money that you're given and the limitations that you're given. But when we go back and look at the study, if we refer to table four in the study, which is in page 16, that states that 100% of, so basically 0% of the tags are non-local, the engineer clarified that those are tags only originating from two given locations in the community. I ask him, how is it possible I stand on Ritchie Avenue every morning and I see all this non-local traffic going by and you're telling me there is zero percent. And so he made this clarification for us. So on Ritchie Avenue, to begin with, we already have a non-local traffic problem, which is, you know, impairing the safety of our children, our citizens. My front neighbor uh, car got hit once already. I mean, we see the traffic going by. We got an additional speed bump, but that, ha that hasn't really helped much to, you know, prevent the car speeding and the, you know, the, the other, um, a lot of traffic that we have there. And uh, I know some of the folks here are concerned about limitations, creating more traffic on Philadelphia Avenue, but another clarification that I got from the traffic engineer is that according to the numbers that are in the Sligo Park Hill study, um, the limitations in the, that are proposed here in the estimates only account to a less than 5% increase in the Philadelphia traffic. So I want you to consider that on behalf of the restrictions that are proposed and on behalf of the safety of our citizens. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Richard Lawn. Uh, I've lived in Montgomery County all my life. Uh, I've lived on Park Valley Road since 1981. Uh, I'm not going to repeat all of the things that everybody else has said. Um, I'll just address a couple of things. With regard to the data, I challenge anyone to come to my house any regular weekday rush hour, morning or evening. I'll make coffee. We'll sit together and count cars. I guarantee you that the count on Park Valley Road, at least, is not an artifact of one or two or three isolated samples. We have tremendous traffic there. There are times I do not even live near the intersection with Piney Branch Road where we cannot get out of our parking, out of our driveway, because cars are backed up so far down Park Valley Road. Um, I understand 
that other people are concerned from adjacent areas about impacts, that's a perfectly valid concern. Uh, however, many of those people, I'm not saying all, but many of them, especially those in Tacoma Park, live on streets that are honeycombed with mean little speed bumps, talk about traffic calming devices, that you cannot go more than five miles an hour over without hitting your head on the roof of your car. We don't have those. Uh, we have very modest speed humps that I can tell you from my own experience you can take at 30 miles an hour or more, and people do. Uh, one final thing, an environmental note. Our street is so narrow that when two cars are passing, even when it's not rush hour, and when, even when traffic is not constricted by a parked car or a trash can impinging on the road after pickup, that they cannot get by. They drive on my lawn. The soil is constantly churned up. The curbs are broken down. And when the, it's a steep hill, when the water flows down it, whenever there's rain, my lawn and half of the curb ends up ultimately in Sligo Creek Park. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next speaker is Marie Defoche. Am I saying that right? Defesh. Defesh. Marie Defesh, and then after Marie Defesh is George uh, Neighbors. Neighbors. That's an I. Neighbors. Neighbors. George Neighbors. 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 Yeah, it's, yes, but it's George. He's here. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Defoche. Hi. I live on 206 Lincoln Avenue, and I've lived there for 30 years. Uh, I am usually using Ritchie Avenue when I need to go to Silver Spring because I feel like I'm an insider and I know that that will get me there. I just never take East West Highway, it's just not part of my repertoire. Ritchie Avenue, whenever I take it, you know, there's sidewalks there. It's a very different situation than what other people are talking about. There's not much traffic. There is sidewalks, they're adequate width, and when I go there, I just go the speed limit, and I don't see why I should be, you know, I should not be able to use this road. Uh, living on Lincoln Avenue, let me tell you, we have gotten so much traffic because we don't have speed bumps. We have, uh, to get speed bumps like all the other neighborhoods, we would have to get uh, the agreement of all the people that live in the big apartment buildings and so we just leave it to that. And the police, believe me, are very happy we don't have any speed bumps. But a lot of traffic on our street also. I think it's very strange that everybody's trying to push out the, tr you know, to stop traffic on their street when, you know, traffic has to go somewhere. It's like water. I, I just don't understand it. Anyway, why couldn't we have, if it comes to, you know, no choice, why couldn't we have a big sticker for the residents of Tacoma Park, a big red dot that on the car that you get, if you have the red dot, you get to go wherever you go, want to go in Tacoma Park. Why not? Why not? And uh, doesn't everybody like this? <laughs> I mean, how would the people of Sago Hills feel from the people of Tacoma Park going through? No answer. Okay. So, and also, why not put speed cameras? Like if people say that people don't stop, why not put uh, cameras there and just get uh, the hell out of tickets to people that go through? They get uh, tickets and they won't go through again. This is the creative solution. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, George Neighbors. I'm George Neighbors, and I live at 116 Sunnyside Road, and I have to say I'm sort of horrified and shocked by the virtual road rage in the room. Um, it's exactly that type of behavior that gets exhibited every single day when I walk to work. It's people being frustrated by the roads that makes it dangerous for me uh, and for my neighbors. You know, I walk every single day to downtown Silver Spring. I walk my dog three times a day on the roads. I bike. I run. I go to see my neighbors, and 
just about every single time there's somebody who blasts through the speed sign, the stop sign, or doesn't pay attention to the pedestrians that are there. Some people have suggested sidewalks, and I've invited the two ladies in front of me that should I not die on the way home tonight so she has her statistic to come see that there's no room for sidewalks. But again, it's that type of behavior that gets exhibited on the roads that are there. At least three times a year over the past eight years, someone careens up Parkside to Sunnyside, with my house being at the corner, and crashes into railroad ties that are there holding back my lawn where there could not be a sidewalk because of the hill. And it's the only thing that prevents the car from driving up into my road, into my yard, and possibly damaging either some of the trees or someone who's at the house. But I strongly urge the support of this plan. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to... I was just going to ask if there's some, anybody who has not spoken and did not sign up who wishes to speak. And sir, you would be the first of such persons. I did sign up. I did sign up. Oh, Why don't you follow me? All right, well, I tell you what, um, you, you can speak after this gentleman. My name is Sean Gibbons. I live in Sligo Park Hills. I've lived there for just a little over a year. Uh, I'll keep this brief. Uh, the role of government, and you guys are all here participating, right? The role of government fundamentally is one thing, to ensure the safety of the citizens. Right now, we're all safe. The government's doing its job. I can assure you the government's not doing a hell of a good job in my neighborhood at 7 o'clock in the morning. This morning... I walked my dog and nearly got hit about four different times on four different intersections by people who were not stopping for stop, line, stop signs or just speeding because they couldn't see me because they were moving too quickly. Here's a promise and something of a threat to my neighbors who don't live in my neighborhood. If you do not pass these traffic calming measures and you, my government does not perform on my behalf, I'll be to turn into something of a suburban terrorist. <laughs> if you guys drive through my neighborhood in the early morning hours and I perceive you to be a threat, I'm going to start walking around with a rock in my hand. So you can alert the Tacoma Park Police Force that you've got someone who's going to be armed and dangerous and potentially going throwing rocks into windshields. It's ridiculous that I should have to even offer up that threat. But I promise you, if any one of you is driving through my neighborhood at 7 o'clock in the morning, going 60 miles an hour. Okay. Why don't you wrap up now? That's okay. The, the, wrap you up. know what I'll do. So okay. please, by all Thank means, um, fix Su the problem. Suzanne Castillo, I think you said? Yes, Castillo. Castillo. Yes, Suzanne Castillo, 8005 Sligo Creek Parkway, which is the part of the parkway above, across uh, from uh, Sligo Hills. Um, I've been there 25 years and of course big changes the traffic is a major change um, I think we all kind of enjoy the amenities of what is really a city life but there's a big price to pay and everything we've heard tonight is describing some of that price um, also I wanted to do as an aside I know that in Anne Arundel County there's some homeowner groups where they actually build, own, and maintain their own roads. These are private communities with private guards and a gate. They pay for their own roads. They control their own roads. But we're not in that position, are we? We're public. We're publicly funded by public money. Um, I think a lot of us are concerned about errors in the study or misconceptions in the study. A lot of people have brought up the 60-second delay thing is laughable. Um, there's a lot of issues just with the actual study going on. But there's also a community issue. We all have people run stop signs. I'd like to see the number of children in this county that go to school with no sidewalks. There, we all, this is everywhere. We have a bad street where there's a blind hill and two cars come to the top. They can't see each other. That's a problem. It's dangerous. But we, you know, it's like, okay, it's time also to be grown-ups. And if things are so horrible with the lack of sidewalks and this and that and the other, then if I were in New York, I'd say, so move already. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, 
sir. My name is Bill McDermott. I am a resident of Sligo Park Hills, and I just want to take an opportunity to kind of address a couple points that I thought were, were very valid, uh, but it's sometimes lack of information. Like someone raised the question, did we consider one-way streets? Yes, we did. There is no working option that meets the need. Uh, the other thing is that when it comes to um, the traffic and stuff, I laughed also when the county engineer at our meeting said, this will add a minute to your commute if you're going around the neighborhood. I mean, that just doesn't ring true. None of us believe that that's the reality of it. It is going to increase. It's going to increase my time when I want to go out of the neighborhood to the south in the evening. But it's a price to pay. Um, the neighborhood needs this. Um, we know that it is a challenge for all of you that are using this as commuter routes. I mean, we all find our own ways, whether it's walking, driving, that works best. But what we're asking for is something that meets the needs of our community, and we ask you to cooperate with us in that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, is there anyone who has not spoken? Sir? Yes, my name is Christopher King, and I intentionally don't want to say my, I live in Tacoma Park, by the way, but I don't want to say my street name because that would obviously slant my view. And listening tonight, you can tell that when a person speaks their neighborhood what they're going to say before they even say it. They're going to be pro the um, changes or they're going to be against the changes. But one thing I've learned, and I'm truly an unbiased party in the context that I don't commute in the morning. I don't have to go up Ritchie. I don't have to go up Hilltop. So to be quite honest, it really won't affect me. But I do drive up Ritchie and Hilltop in the afternoon and the evenings. So I can say this. I am concerned about the safety of your children as well. I don't have to live in your streets to be concerned about the safety of your children. But one thing I can, I've heard throughout the night that seems to be consistent is that the people that live on Ritchie and that live on Hilltop use the term my, I. And what happened to community? What happened to the fact that why can't we come up with a community decision? Now, personally, coming down Maple, the top of Maple, I hate the speed bumps, personally. It makes you have to slow down to zero in my car to get over the speed bump. I have to just pretty much stop and cruise over the speed bump as much as possible. I'm willing to support that on Richie Hilltop. Let's make more tougher speed bumps. Now, I agree that uh, Hilltop is centered so that the, the stop signs sometimes are difficult to see. I am not a speeder. But I did hear from several people who live in Hilltop that admit they do speed. They say they speed, and one gentleman even said he would throw rocks. Now, to me, I think that's a very violent uh, way of dealing with this issue. I think there is a problem that needs to be addressed, but I don't agree with cutting off and sending everyone to Maple, I mean, down um, Piney Branch, or I'm sorry, East and West Highway, which, which is already inundated with so much traffic, as well as down Flower. I don't think that's going to be a true viable solution. It may solve their problem, but it doesn't solve the community problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Go ahead. Joe Hill, line up behind you. What's your name? Thank you. Uh, Tracy Burke. I live at 6 Jefferson Avenue. I've lived there for 25 years, and for a lot of that, I've been commuting up Ritchie and Hilltop. I don't speed in your neighborhood. I can slow down. I've never run over your lawn. I've never run over your kids or your dog. And so it doesn't make me feel very good that you paint the picture of piles of traffic careening out of control down your street. It seems to me that speeding is probably, could be a problem and running those stop signs could be a problem. Why not address that first? Have you had a police car sit there one morning during all this craziness? Have they given out a lot of tickets? Because that's some additional revenue. And over time, people might figure out that you were paying attention. I've also gone very slowly sometimes behind people who are walking their dogs while well, I wait for them to notice that I'm back there and they move over. I'm not rushing. Um, and I'm also very thoughtful about your concern about safety. For every crazy driver that you prevent from going down your street, 
They're going down East West Highway past two schools, past five crossing guards, where there's ride on buses and school buses. It, it's just diverting the problem from one place to another. And lastly, this morning, I did go up Ritchie Avenue this morning at 8.35. I was the only car. I was. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. My name is Mike Tabor. I live on Erie. It's the wait, street wait, with the wait. bumps. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me catch up with you, okay? Mike Tabor, Erie Avenue. Okay. Uh, it's the street with the bumps on it when you come up from Maple. Uh, and I hear a lot of what a lot of people say from Sligo. And I understand it, respect it, I've listened to it. Uh, but uh, people, same thing. People just go right by that stop sign as they're coming up Maple. About every other person just doesn't stop. Same thing in the other way, coming from that Sligo's, Sligo <laughs> uh, a Creek uh, intersection from your neighborhood. Every other person just goes right through the same way they go through your neighborhood. They just go through our neighborhood in the same way. So that's not us versus you, I have to say. Uh, our daughter, we, lived on a, we live in a mixed um, integrated block. That is, it's got apartment houses, uh, rental houses, uh, and private houses, and commercial uh, facilities right there on the same block. I don't think we let our daughter walk outside on, on her own until she was 15. We just, <laughs> we just understood. Uh, am I wrong? I don't think we let her go out until she was 15. Uh, we understood that was part of the price we paid for living in the neighborhood. Uh, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I hate to think because I, I always stop at stop, stop signs that accidentally I'd get a rock smashed through my window by a person who's filled with really, really troubling rage to me. Uh, but I, I hope, I guess the final thing I'd like to say, even though my wife doesn't want me to say it, I hear what feels like a lot of nimbyism here, a lot of nimbyism. And I just wish the concern that's been expressed here and the crowd that comes out here when it comes to electing your delegates to the Maryland State Senate, when it comes, when it comes to <laughs> voting for county council, board of education, when it votes to coming out for laws that affect the way we breathe and the water that we drink, that this many people are concerned and come out. I know some of you do, but a lot more don't. Thank you. Thank you. Can you take one more? Uh, yes, I'm here. I'm at your pleasure here. So my name is Sarah. Reason. Yeah. My name is Sarah Fisher. I live in Ward Five in that peninsula that was drawn on the map there. I am a neighbor of the people who live in Sligo Park Hills, but I was never consulted when this traffic study was being implemented. Uh, however, I am not here to speak for myself. As I was listening to the testimony that was being given tonight, it became very clear to me that there is a large portion of the population in Tacoma Park which will be immediately affected if this traffic study is implemented because they live on one of the route around roads that will be affected. And those are the high density apartment buildings on Maple Avenue. Now, I know that Maple Avenue has theoretically four lanes on it two parking lanes, two travel lanes, and sidewalks on either side. It also has, by my count, in the morning, at least three public school bus stops. It has an elementary school on it. It has, of course, the city hall. It has the library. And it has a large population of lively, energetic young people who sometimes stray off the sidewalk and into the street. If people's concern is for the safety of pedestrians, and for the safety of children on foot in Tacoma Park, I think they ought to consider very carefully what the impact of the drive around traffic on Maple Avenue, on Maple up to the intersection with <clears throat> Route 410 will be. I think that this is a dangerous road anyway for pedestrians, for animals, for bicyclists, for myself on a scooter, on my way to work in East Silver Spring in the morning to which I used to occasionally walk up Park Valley Road, and that the people who are most likely to be affected by this 
unfortunately, have only been represented by one other speaker tonight. And I think we need to consider the impact on them. Thank you. Is there anybody who has not spoken who wishes to be heard? Okay. All right. In that case, then, what I'd like to do now is I would like to repeat again for anybody who came in and didn't get this information before. The record in this matter will stay open until 5 p.m. on March 10, 2010. By all means, you should feel free to submit your written comments, information that you want to have considered. Prefer not to have threats. But um, the uh, recipient, if you're going to send them by mail, they should be mailed to, again, Kershed, K-H-U-R-S-H-E-E-D, Bill Grammy, B-I-L-G-R-A-M-I, at, that would be Montgomery County Department of Transportation, by the way, at 100 Edison Park Drive, fourth floor, Gaithersburg, Maryland, 20878. You may also send your comments by uh, email, which is a perfectly acceptable way to submit them. Again, that would be to Kershed, K-H-U-R-S-H-E-E-D dot Bilgrami, B-I-L-G-R-A-M-I at Montgomery County, Maryland dot gov. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out to share your views. They will all be taken into consideration. I, I understand that these are the kinds of uh, proposals that can be very divisive within a community, and um, it's, a, it's, painful, it's a painful thing to watch, but uh, it's pretty clear there's a problem, um, and uh, we I will take it very, very seriously and very, um, give it due deliberation. I want to ask, did Susan, Susan, did you want to? Yeah, I, I appreciate everybody coming out. Um, thanks all for the comments. I just wanted to mention that I know that the address um, is a little bit difficult to note, and we'll have it on our City of Tacoma Park webpage so that you'll be able to um, get that so that you can send those comments either by email or by mail uh, to Mr. Belgrami. And if, if there, for questions, are there general no, questions? It's, it's about something that was said tonight, and I'm actually quite frightened right now. Because it feels to me is that there is going to be someone on one of those streets that if they take the law into their own hands and decide on their own whether they like the way I drive or don't like the way I drive, I'm actually frightened them. Yeah. Okay. okay. But that's we, we do have to make sure that when people do comments, it's on the it's on the microphone. And just wanted to. Well, I, I, say that. I, I, I understand. I, that. I, I, I appreciate the, now. I appreciate the okay. comment. Re what I'm going to do right now is I. Um, this public hearing is now closed, the, the public hearing aspect of it. We can go off the record. So, okay. Now. Oh, bring me your comments, please. Bring your comments. We'll, uh, if you've got written things that you want to submit, give it to me, and I will get them. I want to check with you, too. Sure.